Hey guys, I'm Damsy from the Omnic Post with an update on Overwatch 2. The first Overwatch 2 PvP beta ended over a week ago. And we are living in a wasteland of recolored skins and a ton of questions. But that isn't stopping Blizzard from keeping up with their promises, as they hit us with another developer blog yesterday. This time around, they did a bit of a deep dive on how data that we generate as players is being used to make Overwatch better. Now, in this case, they talked very specifically on the Overwatch 2 beta and how they used pick rates and win rates of certain heroes to quantify the interest in said heroes and to figure out if they are balanced or not. Now let me first add that this is not their only tool. They actually also listen to the community, get user feedback and of course play the game themselves. But data is in general a very good way to figure out some of the key issues. And not only in gaming, figuring out what people want or what works is an important objective in any digital product. Now I have to say Blizzard keeps impressing me with the transparency with which they have been sharing info lately. I made a video about all of this not too long ago, but it is clear that something changed. Now bear in mind some of the stuff that they explain might be a little complicated. Especially if you're not familiar with statistics or you get distracted pretty easily. The gist of the whole blog post is that they interpret this info in a very objective and smart way. They do take into account the different skill levels of players or that there are way more DPS characters than supports and tanks. That some heroes like Symmetra are often used in specific situations that will lead to a win, etc etc. Let's just say the data, the actual numbers are pretty black and white, but without the proper context it is pretty easy to misinterpret this type of information and draw the wrong conclusions. Now some of the conclusions that they share out of this data is for instance that especially Sojourn and Orissa peaked really hard when it comes to player interest. But this was in no way reflected in the win rates. They were actually at the bottom of that chart. And that high pick rate kind of created the perception that these two heroes are OP. Because you see them a lot in the winning team. But that's just because they got picked a lot. While the teams that did not have an Orissa or Sojourn in their lineup had a bigger chance of winning. Which is extremely interesting. This again proves that perception isn't always right. It rarely is. But on the other hand, I've said this before, perception is what sells the games. So Blizzard has the challenge that they need to figure this out, which isn't easy. I also talked about the effect of the two balancing patches they did. Zenyatta, for instance, saw a 5% jump in his win rate, thanks to his buff and his new kick. Soldier on the other hand saw a huge drop after he got nerfed, but eventually he worked his way back up to acceptable levels. Time is an important part of these types of analysis. We as players need to adjust sometimes, and that's fine, that's part of gaming. Now overall, this has been a very interesting blog post, and it does prove that Team 4 wants to open up, that they want to share and listen. Now my friends, is a very good evolution. Let's just hope that they listen to our feedback about the limited time betas. <coughs> I'll leave a link to the blog post in the description below, go check it out for yourself. And tell me, what statistic in that post surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments. Join me during my streams on twitch.tv slash and make sure to subscribe for more updates on Overwatch.